part two of making the most of your supplies webinar, Get What You Need. I'm Amanda Hart. I lead our marketing team here at Cremaster, and I'll be the host for today's session. I'm joined again by Cameron Brown and Phil Stanger, our solutions architects who know everything there is to know about our software. So they're really going to help us learn how to make the most of uh, the Cremaster tool at this time. We also have Patience Wilson on the line to record and take notes, and she's being assisted today by her new corgi puppy, Kevin, who's our mascot, and he's going to help us out. There he is, looking adorable. Um, so yeah, he's a little tired. Yep, there you go. If you hear any barking or yips, it's, it's Kevin just taking some notes. Um, so for those of you who joined part one of the series, know what you have, this session will really build on a lot of the concepts we covered there, which is all about using reports and dashboards to understand your current status, the location of your critical inventory, like PPE, sanitary supplies, paper towels, all that stuff that really is top of mind right now. If you weren't able to make part one, it's posted on YouTube. We also um, sent it out in an email yesterday, so we'll put the link to that in the chat box. Definitely check it out later if, if you wanna catch up on anything you missed. So in this session, we're gonna talk all about how you can really replenish your inventory now that you know what you need. It's a crit when it's at critical points, you really need to get it uh, back into the field efficiently and safely. So we're really gonna show you how you can use the data within Cremaster to do that. So this applies to people on the distribution side, receiving and filling orders, and also the people in operations or supply chain who need to make sure that only the most critical people are coming in to keep their workers safe and get inventory out on the floor. So um, a couple key questions we're going to talk about is how can you get um, items out on the floor quickly? How can you make sure items are staying sanitized? How can you adapt if your suppliers or your team, if you're the supplier, aren't able to replenish machines directly? So in other words, this is all about how you can get supplies and inventory safely and quickly to your end users. So just a few reminders before we get started. Everyone's on mute, um, so we don't get any background noise. We also have a Q&A module on this webinar. So instead of using the chat box, if you can use that Q&A feature, that'll help us manage all the questions coming in a little better. We'll answer all questions at the end. We have about 15 minutes set aside. So if you do ask a question, just give us a little bit of context so we know what you're referring to. And then lastly, we're recording the session. We'll send it out over email um, for anyone who wants to watch it later or share it with some colleagues. So um, don't feel panicked if, if you don't get something, we'll definitely send it out and you can pause it and replay it later. So with that, I'll turn it over to Cameron to get us started. All right, thanks Amanda. Good morning everyone. Um, like she said, the, the first session we focused on kind of some cool reports and dashboards, things that you can use as you're developing your metrics to determine what you need, like what is spiking in usage, what are the critical items, and how you can mark items as critical, that sort of thing. So this time we're gonna, we're kind of assuming, you know, you're at the point where you've done some of that analysis, or when when you have done that analysis, how do you go about making sure that you're replenishing items quickly, um, doing everything you can to avoid stockouts of essential PPE. You know, things like gloves and, and face masks are, I'm sure, just about every manufacturing facility, there's requirements right now to wear some of that PPE. And if the, if the workers don't have it, then they're going to shut down operations. So obviously, we, you know, as inventory management experts, we want to help you guys avoid that. And there's some, some uh, tactics for doing that. Um, one thing that we're also hearing in the marketplace is that, you know, for durable items, let's say a drill or uh, a gauge or something like that, that's an issue return type of an item, um, they need to be sanitized between use so that the next person who's going to use it feels comfortable that they're not, you know, exposing themselves to, to germs and viruses and all that good stuff. So there's a, there's a cool way in Cribmaster that we can use to help reinforce that behavior. Um, and then if you've identified, if you've done some analysis and identified, maybe you've got surplus of items, um, how can you move that surplus to where you're running low or where it's critical? And then like Amanda said, um, we're also hearing that for some manufacturing facilities, they're not allowing vendors or suppliers into the facility. So it's kind of changing that workflow. Um, so we'll talk about how we can help you with that. So these are the problem statements that we're gonna uh, review or try to help you guys solve. Uh, this is, these are kind of the tools in Cribmaster and I'll refer back to this slide so I don't feel like you need to digest this whole thing. This is 
frankly, more for me to help me keep track of where I am if, uh, more than anything else. But um, we're going to start by talking about the uh, the Curbmaster purchasing module, and then Phil will will join in um, and talk about ways that we can help integrate with ERP systems. Uh, so with, with that, I'm going to bounce over to the escape here, bounce over to Cribmaster. Um, so I'm just going to kind of talk about purchasing in general. Um, you know, Cribmaster's purchasing module really is one of the most robust um, or useful components of Cribmaster. There's lots of features. It's very flexible. It can be used to order everything, you know, all, all the inventory needed for an end user. It's also really good for our advantage distributors, uh, you know, to get replenishment requests from all of your different customers, all the different sites and all that stuff. So I think my sense and or, or our sense is that probably most of you guys are using the Cribmaster purchasing module. Um, if you're not, though, I just want to encourage you to to use it. There's some significant benefits of it. I'm going to look at a bin here. You know, we've been using this N95 face mask example. A lot of the purchasing decisions or determinations are made based on information on this order information tab. So location by location. Um, it, last time we talked about common thing to do is to use um, max, what I would call hard min and maxes, where I've specified 1,200 is the max, 700 is the min. So when we get down to 700, please reorder back up to 1,200. But you can, you can see over here in this middle column, Cribmaster is constantly evaluating and calculating kind of recommended order points based on um, usage, based on lead times, et cetera. Um, you know, we, we calculate on this usage tab, we calculate or we record usage for 24 months. And so based on this information, as well as some options, uh, it'll, it'll come up with its own order points. And you can override some of these. Let's say, for example, you know that the lead time for N95 masks from your supplier is, is now 21 days. Uh, you can kind of override that, and as you calculate it, you can see that'll influence when Cribmaster thinks you should reorder. Uh, and the, the intention, you know, long ago when when uh, Larry Harper and Jim Mahan and Randy Baker were designing Cribmaster was that maybe you use these min and maxes, these hard min and maxes for a period of time. But once you get some good history, some historical data in Cribmaster, you take those out and let Cribmaster help you keep as lean of a tool crib as possible without having any stock outs. Um, so again, I think most of you guys probably are using our purchasing module, but just wanted to explain um, some of the benefits. I would say the, the, the reason I hear most commonly for people that are hesitant about using Cribmaster purchasing is, well, I already have an ERP system and it's already ordering stuff. So I don't need another system. Uh, I just want to use Cribmaster for my vending machines, right? I don't, I already have my SAP or JD Edwards. Uh, so I don't, I don't need that. I would say that if, that's understandable, but still in that scenario, Cribmaster, it's really helpful to have Cribmaster generate the original needs. You know, it's the system of record managing the vending units or the tool crib. Uh, so it's really best suited to generate the original replenishment request. And those can be uh, sent over to an ERP system. And Phil, I'm sure you've got a, a, a ton of examples where you've helped customers with, with things like that, if you'd like to share one. Sure. Well, let, let's just review it and I'll just give you a high level overview. Um, once we got into our version and got off of classic Cribmaster and went to CM9, a uh, Cribmaster added uh, some really great export functionality into our CM9, and of course, it, it's still in there and, and, and able to be used in CM11. This allows us to export data 
in really almost any format, CXML, XML, EDI, any, any, uh, any flat file format, the pipe delimited, fixed length. Um, purchase orders, it's very typical for us to trigger that event. In other words, a PO is created in Cribmaster, and then almost in real time, the export takes place. Um, it's actually a two-step process. Uh, export the data in the format that's needed. Typical for SAP might be uh, XML, where we post to a web service. We then have a send functionality to, that allows us to send data via FTP, SFTP, uh, web service post, HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, we can also do a network drop. So if uh, your crib master is on your network and your ERP system is able to consume that data, we would just drop uh, a file in a directory that your ERP can consume. So archive uh, uh, one of those files uh, in the crib master directories. So it's a very, very highly used by a lot of our distributors. I think uh, a lot of our distributors that are on today can tell you it's, uh, it's uh, highly used, uh, very functional to get uh, the crib master ordering into our, our customers' ERPs to get replenished. Right, and so, uh, you know, again, typically what we see is allowing Cribmaster to generate these kind of individual line item purchase order requests or replenishment requests and then we can send these over to your ERP system um, whether that's SAP or you know there's a there's a, a ton of those different things and then you can use your ERP system to order the inventory in the real world right and when you're ready to ship it out to the customer or ship it to your own facility then you can receive it right in Cribmaster. And there's some significant advantages of using receive transactions in Cribmaster. Specifically with a pro stock, makes the process of reloading a pro stock 10 times faster. Uh, but you also get much cleaner data. You know, you can dif differentiate a uh, receive uh, type of a transaction from an adjust. So there's some, there's some significant advantages. And Phil has helped, uh, we ourselves, as part of Stanley Black & Decker, we use SAP as our ERP system. So if you've been to our facility in Marietta, you know, we have a tool crib uh, parts department. We use Cribmaster to run that tool crib. We integrate that with SAP. We have helped customers, Phil specifically has helped customers integrate with dozens of ERP systems. So definitely something that we can help with, and it's very, very uh, valuable. It makes you know, eliminate dual entry, or all sorts of things. So, uh, so keep that in mind. Okay, I'll stop harping on that, but good stuff so far. Um, one other thing we wanted to talk about, um, you know, as we've identified certain items being absolutely critical, you may find it useful to increase the frequency that you're delivering product to your customers. Or if you're an end user, you may find it um, helpful to increase the frequency that, that your suppliers are del delivering things to you guys. So you can, I think the most common way you'd want to do this is at the site level. So if you're an advantage distributor, these sites typically re represent each of your customers for each of your customers' locations. And you would typically order site by site. Um, so you'd want all the orders from one location to kind of follow the same logic. Well, you can come into these site profiles and you can override the, what we call the auto purchase days. So maybe historically you've been getting orders from this site, getting new POs, new requests on Mondays and Wednesdays. Maybe you've, you've identified that, you know, they're really burning through some of that inventory very quickly. So we need to increase the frequency. Maybe we want to increase it at a Saturday or add Friday and Saturday. So now you can that easily change how frequently you're getting auto purchased POs. Um, I'll just note that you can also do this at the supplier level. So if you're an end customer and you're not using the site profiles, you can also do it by going into the properties of, of your various suppliers or 
vendors, um, and you can change how frequently or which days you're getting POs. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So we've talked about we kind of went over our, our purchasing module, some of the benefits it can bring. Talked about integrating to ERP system. We just looked at how easy it is to increase the frequency of replenishment. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about, uh, I'm just going to kind of describe the use case here. Let's say you get a, you're getting uh, POs or orders or replenishment requests on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So yesterday I would have gotten a, a PO. Um, let me pull up a bin here as an example. I'm going to go find my N95 mask again. So let's look at this example. So um, you can see I have 10 that are on order. I'm, my, my quantity is below my min. Uh, I have eight in the bin. My min is 12. So it, it reordered yesterday. I got a PO yesterday for 10. But in the meantime, more inventory has been issued out. So if I, if I just receive these 10, adding that into what's currently in them, and that's only 18, but there's space for 24. So that's not gonna fill up the bin all the way. And again, given the situation right now where some of these items are so critical, we think it would make sense to try to fill up, especially vending equipment, to fill it up all the way to the top. Um, one, one field that's really a best practice to use when you're, when you have vending equipment is this bin capacity. You know, this max is saying for ordering purposes, how much to order up to this bin capacity is saying, this is this only this much can physically fit in the bin. So we will never, uh, put more than that in there because there's not enough space. You know, imagine a helix in a toolbox or how many pie slices you have in a pro stock, et cetera. So this bin capacity is a good field to use. But the way to solve for this, you know, again, if I just fulfill the order of 10, that's not going to, that's not going to bring me all the way up to the top. So what we would recommend is, say I got the PO yesterday, Tuesday. Now it's Wednesday and I'm ready to load the truck up to take it over to the customer's facility. Um, you can run a, a simple report. I'm going to come into reports, Ben, and the one we made super simple. I called it a fill report. And you can sequence this by crib. So let me just look at that one, that one crib I was looking at, which was crib two for me. I'll preview this and show you what it, what it shows. It's basically just going to find bins that are below their min. Or the, so current quantity is below the order point. And it's just going to do basic math. Okay, how much can fit in the bin? So for the N95 face mask, you can see, um, you know, I have an order for 10, but I can really bring 16 out to the customer's facility. So I would use this as I'm loading up the truck, you know, loading the inventory up to take out to the customer's facility. Because I want to bring as much as I possibly can, fill it up so that they've got as much inventory as they, as they have. And again, the order was cut yesterday. But since then, it looks like six more have been issued out, right? So I'm going to fill it up. Um, and I'll show you real quick how you, how you would do that. So just kind of follow along with me. And now I've run this report. I've identified I need to bring 16 and 95 base mass. I put that in my truck. And I'm ready to go out to the customer's site. When I get there, I can go over to the, to the ATR, log in. Um, come to admin mode, receive, there's my 10 uh, N95 face masks. So I'm going to receive that amount. Okay. And then for the additional six that I brought over, I can come into admin and then I can use this stock transaction. This is basically just letting you it is kind of what it sounds just stock all the way up to the tippy top, right? And you can you can see which bins 
have room for more inventory. And if you click on one, it'll tell you how many bins are available for restocking, et cetera. Um, I can find my N95 face masks. Here it is. I'll click on stock and I can enter how many I'm going to put in. And now it's filled that bin all the way up to the top. And I'll just show you at the bin here, kind of the evidence that you get or the transactions that result from that. So if I come over here, there you go. I see my, so here's today, I did a, I did a receive of 10 and then I did a stock of six. I can report on both of these and see how I'm doing. But th this is really helpful because now the customer has a full uh, stock of inventory there. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna bounce back to our problem statements. Um, we've kind of been talking about these first two. How can I replenish items quickly? You know, we talked about changing the frequency that you're sending out orders. Um, how can I help avoid stockouts? You know, uh, I think filling bins all the way to the top and doing so as frequently as you can is probably the best tactic there. Um, so let's talk about this, this situation. If you have durable items, how can Cribmaster help uh, reinforce the right behavior for the mechanics or the end user so that they're using them responsibly, sanitizing them, uh, wearing gloves, that sort of a thing, so that we're really limiting the potential risk um, of, you know, of transferring germs between folks. Um, and and the, the way that Cribmaster can help with this is this feature called item checklist, okay? So let me take a look over here in Cribmaster. I'm gonna close some of these tabs out just to clean things up. I'm gonna go find my items. Uh, I was on the reports tab. Let me go to my home tab, items, and I'm going to search for hammer drill. Uh, man, there's a lot of there. Here we go. Got this DeWalt flex bolt hammer drill. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at this item. It's a durable item. Uh, meaning it's issue returned, right? Um, and on the more tab, you can click on this box here that says use checklist. Once you save that, then you get a tab over here called checklist. And what I've done, you can, you can decide what process it's for. For this example, I've used the return process. And then you can define what needs to be checked off each time this tool is returned. So I've given it three steps. Verify gloves were worn, verify mask was worn, verify you wiped down, you know, sanitized the surface. Uh, so I can, th this could be one step, it could be 20 steps, it can be whatever you, you want, right? So you just kind of make this little checklist. And I'll show you what it looks like when someone issues and returns this, uh, this DeWalt drill. So over an ATR, which again is the software that runs on our bending units. I'll log on as my favorite guy here. And maybe I'll search for the drill. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna issue that to myself. Okay. Uh, you'll notice that the items out icon changed to red because there's something checked out now. So, Eric goes about, uses the drill to do the task that he's working on. And when he's ready to return it, he logs in again, comes to return mode. And when he returns this item, you'll see that it pops up this little box. And it, it says, you know, this item requires completion of a checklist. And so he goes through here and says, yes, I did wear gloves. Yes, indeed, I did wear a mask and I sure did sanitize so this. This is just helping reinforce that behavior. You know, if they see this every time they return it, you know, maybe maybe they forgot to sanitize the tool. And now this will remind them and just help reinforce that um, the behaviors that manufacturing facilities are adopting um, to help 
flatten the curve, as they say. Okay, so I think that's a pretty cool cool feature, and you can use it for on the issue process also. You can use it for whatever you'd like, um, but we thought that was a pretty good use case for this this thing. Um, so let's talk about this problem statement here, I'm kind of going out of order, but what can I do if suppliers aren't allowed into manufacturing facilities? I know that at Cribmaster, at our facility, we've really tightened down who is able to come into the building. And I'm sure that's the case at lots of manufacturing facilities. We've heard from some of our distributor partners that they're not allowed into the manufacturing facilities. They used to do the receive um, feature, um, but now they're not allowed to. So you may have to work, if you're, a, if you're a distributor, you may have to work with your end user customers um, and help them take on that new responsibility of you know, taking the inventory from the, the, the uh, dock door and taking it over to the machine and receiving it. So we wanted to show you um, a couple things that would be helpful for that. Number one, uh, you can help them by giving permissions to new individuals that need to do the receives. So I think what I would do is come in to system security access codes and maybe make a new one. So say I want a new one, I call it R for receive. Okay, and then you can go, come in and just specify exactly what they need. Oops. Receive. So they will need under purchasing, they're going to need receive inventory, this guy here. Um, and then under transaction, probably want to give them stock adjustments. And then under touch screen, probably stock adjustment as well. And that would be the bare minimum uh, permissions that somebody would need in order to start doing receive uh, transactions. Okay, so you could create a security access code, ask your, cus your customers who is gonna take on that responsibility. You can find their name um, and clear her access. And now I can just say, okay, now Jennifer is the new receive person and she'll inherit those permissions that we've created. So now she has permissions to do receives, right? So you can help your customers with that. So that's one aspect of it, um, of handling this, this kind of change in the world where suppliers are not allowed into manufacturing facilities. You can help your customers by giving them the right permission so that they can start doing this on their on their own. And then one other thing we wanted to talk about, um, that's helpful for this situation. Hold on, I'm gonna pull up the app on my phone, so give me one second here. Okay. Um, so what I wanna talk about is this, concept of touchless receive with CM Mobile. So for certain um, scenarios, specifically a tool, if you're bringing, if you're a, a vendor and you're bringing supplies out for a tool crib or a POU type of a scenario where there's just free issue racks of shelves, um, a toolbox, the, the crib master vending toolbox would be another good situation. Um, what you could do is set up a process with your customer where you bring the inventory to the dock door and then you count it with them. They, they agree that everything is there. You can come into the Cribmaster mobile app. And the way this works is first, when you log on, you see the site profiles or the customers that you have access to. Once you click on one of those customers, it shows you all of the cribs that are at that facility, click on one of those, and you can come into receive, and it'll show you all the open PO line items. So if I'm bringing material for a tool crib or for a 
a POU solution, I can meet the, the shipping receiving folks at the dock door, show them that everything is here, and I can go ahead and complete this received transaction on my phone, and they don't have to touch anything, right? And now the customer just has to physically take the inventory and put it away. Uh, so that's that's one good tactic for handling this new kind of change in in process where suppliers are not allowed into manufacturing facilities. A um, couple words of caution for this process: this would not be a good idea for a pro stock because um, it would take a really long time to to go in and physically put the inventory away if you're not using the receive function at ATR. So wouldn't recommend this for a pro stock. This is also not a good idea for a way station or a flex sense, which are our two solutions that use scales or weight-based sensing. Um, again, you know, you wouldn't want to do the receive transaction ahead of time. You want to do that when you're physically putting the inventory into the machine. Uh, and then just, it, so, so think think this through, maybe test it out, but it's a good kind of arrow to add into your quiver of things that you can offer to your customers. Okay. Minimize that. All right. Okay, so that's kind of how we would solve for the situation where suppliers aren't allowed in. Give them permissions to do it themselves. Um, and then uh, potentially use that touchless receive using the mobile app. Uh, well, one thing we also wanted to, to show you guys is um, the consignment flag change. And I'm actually gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna turn it over to Phil and Phil's gonna kind of walk us through um, an example of, of why that would be a good idea and how you go about doing that. So let me stop share, Phil, and I'll let you right. pick it up. We're good. Can we see it? Yes. So uh, we're going to look at the consignment price flag change in Cribmaster. And if I go to system, system options, configuration, I'm going to collapse all my groups here and just go to the issue under schedule price consignment flag changes. And I'm going to check that. Now, our thought here is, is that um, maybe you're, you're a distributor or an end user of Cribmaster and your customer was um, uh, supplying their own inventory for certain uh, items that are now uh, out of reach for that customer, but you're a distributor who has them and you can come in and change settings that say, hey, the customer still had 10 of this item, but I'm going to stock uh, 50 more. Now they have 60, but it's going to be on a consignment plan where I own those other 50. So we're going to go in and look at that. I've enabled the option. Of course, always hit save when you change an option. And I'm going to go to home bins, and we're going to look at uh, disinfectant wipes. And I'm going to double click that bin and it's going to bring up the bin properties. Once you have that option on for scheduled uh, price consignment flags, at the override issue price, there's a little button here and you can see now it says schedule price change. I have 65 in the bin. I brought 55. I'm a distributor. Um, once I issue out the 10 that the customer owned, I'm going to change the flag on the bin to consignment. So it's as soon as 10 get issued out, it's now consigned. And I own that inventory until it's issued out. And then the customer will, will pay me for that. Of course, we can run reports uh, to sh consignment uh, issues by crib or by customer. <clears throat> Another thing we thought we'd look at is uh, a report to see what do I own and what does the customer own? And, and maybe I need to shift inventory around. Maybe a, a customer has uh, too much of a consigned inventory that I still own and that I could move to another customer. Um, so I'm gonna look at consignment value report. 
this is everything, uh, whether it's consigned or non-consigned, but we're just gonna look at the top item here as an example. And you can see that I have four left that are non-consigned. They're owned by the customer. They had already purchased, uh, but I have a thousand and eight of uh, consigned inventory in this bin. And I'm showing you the value of consigned and the value of uh, uh, non-consigned and the value of consigned. So maybe a way to move inventory, um, maybe a way where a customer is reaching out to you and saying, hey, I've got this inventory but I'm having trouble finding it. Can you supply it to me? And can we do that on a, uh, on a consigned basis? And, and I only pay for what I use. We thought that might be useful. Um, we know the uh, consignment deals are, are contractual, uh, but in these times, um, it might be something that we thought we should show. Yeah, I think that's great, Phil. You know, maybe this is an opportunity if if you if your customer has been supplying their own inventory and they they don't have access to it anymore, maybe you can use this as an opportunity to kind of win some additional business by um, stepping up now, supplying it now. You can use our consignment to keep track of the inventory that they own versus what you own, et cetera. So very cool. Thank you. All right, so now I'm going to share. Again, and we'll look at, we just got a couple more here. Let me click this. Okay. Um, so now we're, we're kind of looking at, can I move th this problem statement? How can I move inventory from an area of surplus to where it's needed? Um, so there's a couple of things we want to look at for that. Um, the first we wanted to explain is this stock from bin. It's really what I like to call a hub and spoke model. So the use case here is, let's say you've got a an end customer and they've got you know maybe five or ten vending units at their facility, and um, for the for the critical items you're finding that you're having to bring more inventory out two, three, four times a week, um, and they're still really burning through it quickly. Uh, what we've seen some of our customers do is get access to a, um, a supply closet or a locked area or a section of the tool crib or, or some area at the customer's facility where they can store additional inventory, excess inventory. Then maybe you only have to bring a pallet at a time out to the end customer. And what you can do is you can point the vending machines to replenish from the supply closet or from this area in the tool crib or from this pallet or whatever. And that kind of gives you it, it, two benefits. Number one, there's a, a safety net at the customer's facility. So if the vending machines run out of inventory, they still have, um, you know, the inventory in the supply closet or in the tool crib. Number two, it's just easier on, on you as a distributor. You don't have to bring the exact amount out every, you know, three three times a week. You just bring a pallet out when you need to. So we'll show you how that works in Cribmaster. I think a decent amount of folks use this or are aware of it, but we wanted to mention it because it, it could be especially useful right now. So again, I'm going to look at my uh, my N95 item. I'll click on the All Cribs button and I'll search for N95. So I've got a couple um bins uh i'm going to assume crib one is like the warehouse or the tool crib or my supply closet this is where i've got a lot a big supply you can see i've got 1600 of them and then crib two and crib 11 are vending units at this customer's facility so what i can do for those bins is come in here and use this stock from bin so i'll drop this down and say i want to stock this vending machine from crib one and I, and I, I want to stock crib 11 from crib one now when when these bins reach their order point what they're going to do is automatically generate a transfer from crib one out to in this case crib two to my pro stock and crib one where i've got a bunch of of inventory that's that's still going to generate po's and send me a, a replenishment request to bring more material out to the site. Um, 
So it's kind of that, that's why we call it a hub and spoke. You know, the hub is this crib one. We've got a bunch of inventory and it's feeding inventory out to these spokes or to these other locations. So we think that's one good tactic for, um, for kind of making sure that you've got surplus inventory. The other, really the last thing that we're going to show before we open it up for, for questions, um, maybe is a little bit more applicable for the end customer. So if you're a, a manufacturing facility and you use Cribmaster to track your own inventory, um, this would be a good, a good option. Um, it could work for distributors too, but I think probably more applicable for end customers. Um, and it, it's this, uh, this concept of transferring surplus or excess before purchasing new. So I'm going to kind of walk walk through this, and we'll just explain it as we do. Uh, first of all, there's an option that you would turn on. Come to system, system options. This one's under the ordering um, feature here. So if I search for surplus, there we go. Transfer surplus or excess before purchasing. Okay, so if I check that, press save. Now I can. What, what Curbmaster will try to do is if there's excess inventory somewhere um, and a bin has a replenishment need, it'll try to transfer available inventory first. And I can I can kind of designate what is considered surplus or excess a couple different ways. The first way is I could do a whole crib. So again, if I'm considering crib one, like my warehouse or my supply closet or my tool crib um, and I want this all this inventory to be kind of fair game I can come into the properties of this crib and set its ordering type to surplus crib okay and so now the inventory in this crib is sort of fair game for other bins so if another bin in crib two or three needs uh, additional inventory it'll it'll try to generate a transfer from here first and then only order if there's not enough in crib one to meet the demand. Okay, <clears throat> so you can do it at a, an entire crib level. You can also find my little example item here. Here's my N95 face mask in crib one. If you didn't want to do the entire crib, you can come into individual locations, so maybe your critical items, right? And you can and this, I think the formula here is a little bit complicated, but you can see here I can mark, you know, Cremaster suggesting a certain level that as long as I'm above that, that should be considered excess. I can override that. So I can say, you know, I want to keep at a minimum 100 in this bin, but anything over, the net, over that would be considered excess. So in this case, you know, I've got 1,674. I've said, uh, you know, I want to keep at least 100, that's the excess floor. So um, 1574 would be available for other bins to get to draw from. Yeah, if I could point um, out something, Cameron, um, the yeah. excess floor that's calculated there, you most likely have two months set as an option. Notice your monthly usage is 233. So mm -hmm. two months usage is 466. So anything over 466. So there is a global okay. that says how many months usage um, and over that. Okay, so I kind of lost out there for a second, but I, that's a great point. Okay, so he's explaining that this is, and all these things are calculated based on, there's a bunch of options. Um, we won't get into all of them here, but there's all kind of options about how does Curbmaster calculate these things? How many months usage does it need, um, et cetera? Um, okay, I think that's probably about enough of me just droning on. So I think we've got about 15 minutes left. Um, Amanda, I will stop sharing here and we'll turn it back over to you. We can maybe address some of the questions that have been coming in. Yep, yeah, we got a bunch. Of questions that came in so um, some of them seem kind of hard so if we can't answer anything we'll take note and follow up with you guys after okay all right um, 
So the first one, if someone is sick, is there a way for me to pull a report to see what items they use so they can be sanitized? That's a good question. Uh, yes, absolutely, you can do that. That's that's uh, right in Crewmaster's wheelhouse. Um, I tell you what, I'll share my screen real quick. This would be very, very easy to do. So let's say someone tested positive for COVID-19 um, and you wanted to identify everything that they had used. You can come into reports, transaction, um, maybe I'll sequence by employee. I'll choose just that employee. What's my favorite guy's name? Something like Fodman. There he is. And I can give it a date range. So I could say uh, we realized that you know he may have been sick up to you know March 4th until today. So show me everything he has issued out. And I can preview this and see, okay, here's all the, the transactions that he's, he's done. Okay. Uh, sorry, I got a, the wrong report. Let me just do this guy. There we go, that's better. Okay, so there's the daytime, which location, what item he took, et cetera. So yeah, that's a, that's a good question, but absolutely that one's pretty straightforward. All right. Okay, great. Um, can I pull a report by the item to show who used it in case someone is sick? Yes. yes. Um, same, really the same thing I just showed. I don't even think, I think you guys can just imagine. Um, same thing, just rather than sequencing by the employee, I would sequence by the item and pull that item. And it, that would probably be better if it was like a serialized tool because I could pull specifically that particular drill you know i could figure out who used that okay so yeah maybe that's like a two-part thing if uh let's say someone got sick first thing i would do is pull a transaction report showing everything they used then i could dig into well who else used all of those tools right yeah definitely that's helpful okay next question um when someone using bin max capacity feature how does the machine know that it can issue more than max level set? That. Do we want a little clarity on that question? Yeah, usually well, me... max is your bin capacity. So you wouldn't really be able to issue more than what your capacity is, right? Cause... Yeah, you may be, so the, the bin capacity is the, the physical space, how many can physically fit in there? That's, Crewmaster is never gonna allow more than that to come into the unit. Let's say that's 20. Maybe over time you've realized, you know what, they're not using much of this. So I know there's 20 slots in the Helix, but they're really only using this infrequently. So I'm gonna set my min to five, my max to 10. Well, so Crewmaster is only gonna fill it up to 10. Uh, but if you wanted to, if you wanted to bring 20 out, you still, you still can because the, the max capacity is up to 20. So that's kind of the difference between the, the max from an ordering perspective and the capacity is the physical space that, can, that it can hold. Okay, we had a follow up to the previous question about pulling reports by item and employee. Um, so I just wanna go back to that before we move on. Um, the question from Kelly is, could you also look under the employee tab? to see items employees have used. Yes, absolutely, that's a good point. Yeah, you don't have to do a report. You can just uh, come and find the employee. So my guy's name is Eric Spodman. So I can open up the properties of Eric, come to the transactions, and they're kind of sorted by date. So I can go back to, uh, you know, maybe it was this date or something. So here's all the tools that he used. Um, if one of them, if they're serialized, I would have that information as well. I can filter this by just, you know, by just issues. So there's everything he's issued out. So the safety harness, uh, I think is serialized. If I look in here, I should see serial ID. 
But yeah, you can do all this analysis just right in the crib master client. Here's the serial ID. So then I could do further analysis. Okay, well now let's go look at this particular tool. Since Eric used it, let's see if anyone else used it. Mm -hmm. And same thing, I can come to the transactions tab and see who used this tool. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah. All right, a question from Hirad Sultani. For auto purchase POs, no matter which day I pick in the suppliers and customers profile, the auto purchase report always runs on Wednesdays at 7 a.m. What could be the reason? Phil, what do you think about that? Yeah, we'd have to look at, uh, probably look at your options. I'm, I'm gonna open up Printmaster real quick here and take a peek. So we have auto purchase options where you either auto purchase all items or only selected items uh, that can be selected at the supplier tab of the item or, or the bin. Um, but uh, really that should work. Um, if you're saying you go to the site and you want to uh, purchase on a certain day and it's ignoring it, that's an issue. I think uh, that's something we'd have to have our support team look at. Okay. Is, is that is that what I was hearing that uh, even though I say to order on Monday and Thursday, it only orders on Wednesday? That's seven? yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have to look at that. You know, there is an auto purchase start hour uh, that is uh, an option in Cribmaster. By default, it's midnight, uh, but you possibly have changed that to seven a.m. But the uh, only Wednesday ordering is, is troublesome, and that's something we'd have to look at. Okay, Harad, we'll yeah. take a note and we'll follow up with you right after. All right, a question um, from Porfirio. Is the mobile app compatible with CM10? The mobile app is compatible with CM10, CM10 and CM11. The mobile app uses um, what's called the CM API, which is another web service um, that needs to be configured on the server side, uh, but it is compatible with CM10 and later. Great. A question from Brian Wilkinson. Explain how max lead time days is calculated. It's max, well, Phil, you may want to jump in here, but the lead times are calculated based on basically the duration from the time that a PO is generated to when it is received. So every time that's done, it's the, you know, the average is updated. If you've done it, if you've replenished a bin 10 times, you know, each, each, each received time is gonna count for one tenth of the average. Uh, the max would be the longest duration that you had in reality. So if, if usually, cut a PO and you get the inventory and receive it three days later, that's your average, but one time it took 30 days for some reason, someone was out, then your max lead time would show 30 days. That, that's correct. Okay. Um, another question from Hirad Sultani. Can we run daily scheduled reports every day at a, at a particular time covering the past 24 hours? Absolutely. Uh, I'll show my screen here. This is kind of like a core feature that Cribmaster can do. So you come into reports. Sounds like maybe you're talking about a transaction report. Maybe you just want to see, you would say, uh, let's say yesterday, and we would run this at midnight. So it would be the previous day. Um, what If you wanted to add parameters to it, like if you just wanted to look at a certain site or a certain uh, department or certain transactions you can certainly do that and then you can come in and click schedule and maybe this is called my daily transaction list and I want this to go out daily at whatever time I want uh, maybe I'll use right now and then I can choose how I want it to be sent so maybe I want it to come over as an Excel file so I can do some further further analysis, or maybe I just want a, a clean looking PDF either way. And I can, I would say the most common thing that people use to transport or send the 
the data is an email and maybe I want to send it to these people. So now every single day at 1054 in the morning, I'm going to get a list of all the transactions that occurred the previous day. So yeah, that's, that's right in our wheelhouse. And a question from Brian Wilkinson, can you run a report for max lead time days over a certain amount in order to come up with items that have a longer back order time? It would probably be a custom report. I don't think we have anything canned, but uh, it's certainly possible. Um, and I, you know, if, if it's a parameter in a report, then you can't schedule it because once CM agent goes to process that scheduled report, there's nobody there to uh, select that parameter value. But we could certainly make a report that says enter your, you know, max lead time that you want to report on and then show you everything that uh, has a higher lead time than that, certainly. But it would be, yeah, a, custom, it would be a custom report, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And to, follow up on what Phil's saying. So if you want to be able to, every time it, you run it, type in how many days the max lead time, you know, to kind of specify the filter, um, you can do that. Or if you want to schedule one, you would have to just decide, okay, how, how long is, is long enough? Is it 30 days? Then we could schedule a report maybe once a month that shows you here's all the bins where the max lead time is greater than 30 days. And you would just get that in your inbox once a month. Um, a question from Porfirio, um, which mobile app in the app store do we use for the um, demo you showed today? Good question. Yeah. So if you go to the Apple store or the Google play store, so there's an Android version and the iOS version, if you go to either one of the stores and you search for Cribmaster, you're going to find two results. You want to go with the one that says NG for next generation or new generation. So um, that's that's what you want to look for there, NG. Okay. Um, and then can checklists be used in CM Mobile? Checklists are not compatible with CM Mobile. CM Mobile is not aware of the checklists. So the CM Mobile implementation doesn't, is not aware of every single feature and function in Cribmaster. Um, and that's one of the, so it, it wouldn't have any idea. It wouldn't ask you the checklist. Uh, the checklists work in the client. So if you're running a tool crib, and they also work in ATR. Okay. And last question, can any of these changes be temporary so as not to override usual process? You know, obviously, that's if you're changing options in Cribmaster, then they need to be a change back to the way it was. Um, you know, there's no there's no easy button that says, hey, change it back to what everything was uh, 30 days ago. So that would be something you'd want to document, I believe. What changes are you making? Uh, so you can go back to the original settings at, at some point. Um, you know, we could certainly help you with that, but I think it's more uh, documenting what changes you're making and, uh, documenting what the existing settings were so you can go back to those after after this all blows over. Yeah, and you could even take a, you know, talk to your server admin, whoever's hosting your environment, your DBA, take a, a backup of your database today. Um, that way, whatever changes you make, you can at least compare, you know, exactly what the options were beforehand. It might be a good idea. Right. Okay. Well, that's all the questions that came in um, just right on time too. So thank you everybody. Um, so that was part two, get what you need of our um, series. We have part three, get inventory on the floor next week, Wednesday, so a week from today. That's all about once you have all the inventory, you've received everything, um, how can you optimize and reconfigure your machines to maximize the space to get as much inventory as possible at point of use. Um, so we're really excited for that. We hope you'll join us. If you haven't signed up yet and are interested, um, definitely go check out our webinar page and register. You can access that um, through any of our email signatures or in any of the marketing emails we've sent recently, or we can send you the link directly if you'd like to reach out. 
Um, so thank you, Phil and Cameron. This was another great session. We'll send out the recording later today and reach out with any questions. Thanks for joining. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you for joining us.